Hi, this is Kevin Reck with Bella Vita Dental Designs. We're based out of Arden, North Carolina. A dental technician. I'm going to go over the new Software 20 Denture module with you. The new Software 20 has an availability of using individual teeth, which basically you can use a biogeneric um, tooth molds, etc. Split the files. You'll be able to mill and or print those. Today, I'm actually going to just go be going over the denture teeth, the IPN 3D portrait inspired teeth. Uh, very highly aesthetic tooth mold. Um, right now, with the digital setup, you are able to have both balanced and lingualized occlusal setups already predetermined. There is uh, currently 14 anterior and 12 posterior molds. For the digital world, that fits about approximately 80% of all patients. So we're gonna go and dig a little deeper into uh, the software, kind of show you uh, some of the, the little techniques that I have. It's gonna be not a very long video. We're gonna have more in detail videos coming out. This is just to kind of get you by so you can, uh, the people that might not have been able to see it in Chicago, uh, just give you a little, uh, fresher on it. So here uh, it looks just like normal administration if you're used to the in-lab software. We're going to go doing denture, denture teeth. In this selection you're able to choose your tooth mold. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I'll, I'll sh pop in every now and then window clips to show you. It doesn't show the pop-up windows in the video so I'll show you kind of how to do the, the setups and stuff like that. You're able to actually choose the tooth mold in administration and it'll show you length and size of edge uh, all the basically a living tooth mold guide in administration so that saves you the time of having to pull out you know your paper uh, tooth mold guide to kind of guesstimate on on that so I'll, I'll pop up a picture here this is how you're gonna scan and you're gonna be scanning in your bite rims with this bite rim holder for your Ineos X5 scanner What's very crucial that we do and ask our dentist is to make sure that they form their bite rims. You want to make sure in the 3D workspace, you don't have an articulator, you don't have everything all in hand. It makes it so much easier to have proper uh, lip support, incisal edge positioning, midline, canine, uh, high smile line, etc. So uh, it's very key to, uh, to talk with your dentist about that. It really makes the workflow uh, very much very much smoother in regards to tooth placement. So as you can see just in the scan phase, it looks like just any other uh, scan except it's a little different. It's a lot smoother in software 20. I really like it. So you'll scan in your upper, your lower, and your bite rim. So it's going to actually do a 360 scan. It's going to do the intaglio and the, uh, the facial of it. So you'll be able to get all your your representation marks your high smile line, midline, etc. Moving on into the model phase, you'll have the edit model, which is great. If you see any blurbs or imperfections at this stage, you're able to edit them, smooth them out, any wrinkled areas that you might not like. Upper jaw, I do not have done, but I want to make, make this a, a good point, a note, if you will. You want to scribe in your post dam in your model before scanning. Currently the software, you do not have the ability to create a digital post dam. If you scribe your post dam in now and then scan it in the software, you'll have a 3D representation. So it'll actually obviously contour where you scribe that. So I'd go a little bit deeper, but it it, it, it makes it, um, you have the, the, the post dam. With that being said, believe it or not, the way digital is nowadays, the fits we're getting from milled or printed is remarkable. I always offer and give the dentist the post palatal seal, the post dam. Sometimes, guess what? They, they'll they get it off. Uh, they'll just grind it off because, you know, the suction and fit is, is that great. So, that, you know, that's kind of interesting. Um, information that we've got back from milled and printed uh, digital dentures. So we're going to go on into the rest. So now we're in the, the, the occlusal stage. So you can actually change the bite, but how you know your bite is correct 
is see how it's kind of scattered on the intaglio the purple scattered that's letting you know that your bite rim is stitched to those intaglio of the upper and lower arch it's very key um very key to have make sure you look at that if you don't see that sketch pattern uh, you, you're going to want to go ahead and rescan. I would never use in the tools. There is a way to try to correct the bite, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. So you can always take the bite registration off and uh, proceed to look at it that way. So setting your models the same way as you would in current software, you're going to align your midline in the bite rim, uh, your vertical. That's why I said the bite rims are very crucial. It helps with the proposal of your teeth so much better. Um, you want to start with the best uh, proposal that you can get. You don't want to sit there and um, have to continue to move individual teeth. Like I said, these teeth are already pre-occluded. I'll talk a little bit more about the, the teeth that are already um, occluded together and kind of how you want to keep those in positioning so you don't start tweaking teeth and messing up the, the occlusal aspect of it. So here in denture baseline, you're going to be drawing out your uh, the depth of how far you want the denture. So in your vestibule, you can go cut it a little short. I tend to draw mine farther out. As you can see, we tend to make the models nice and smooth on the, on the borders. So you can kind of really see exactly the deepest part of the vestibule area. And, um, you know, it's very easy. You double click to start. Uh, click, 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 you draw, draw your line and double click to end your line. And then you can always edit the base as well. Um, and I'll show you once we go forward why I, I draw it a little bit farther here. Um, it's just, it gives you a thicker, a thicker base. So here we are in our insertion access. You're able to use this tool, move it left, right, forward and create any block out, or you can go into the block out itself. Um, so as you can see here, there is no indica indications of undercuts. There's a slight one here, but nothing major. We'll go to the lower and kind of evaluate that. So you can see there is some undercuts. Typ typically that's where there will be undercuts in that area. So uh, you can go now and use your block out tool if you'd like. Or you could go and do that, um, like I said, you could go ahead and do that later on. You can uh, remove any of that, but you might as well use your, uh, your tool now. It's basically a good way to just get rid of that. But to me, I don't find those undercuts back there too bad. Um, I, I still feel that the denture will be, will be passive in those areas. So I'm gonna show here, I'm gonna pop up another uh, photo so you can kind of see when you have right here, you're going to be doing landmarks. So when you're highlighting this area, the green ball, you're going to see that it's going to be a premolar quadrant. Um, the highlighting in the in the the blue ball, it's going to be a, your your molar quadrant, and you know the the retromolar pad area. So this is giving you can have a dentist or a um, a technician that might not know as much, and they'll be able to actually read and look at um, at what's shown on the screen. So the line is your static line as well. So you can see if that's going over the ridge uh, correctly. And as you see, the in indication on the upper is you're gonna be your incisive papilla, premolar quadrant, and then um, your tuberosity, the center of your tuberosity on the upper. So that's what's going to create your uh, static line, and that's going to help align in the software where the original proposal for those teeth are. So here's pocket space. So these are this is once you start getting into the design aspect. Um, I always leave these on uh, the factory settings. You can change the thickness if you want, but at a minimal thickness of about 2.5 millimeters, you're pretty good. Uh, right here, smooth palatal, palatal folds. Um, that will actually, which is really cool, it'll re recreate the, uh, the natural rugae of the upper dentition. With that being said, it's very interesting. A lot of patients tend, when they get dentures, if they haven't been wearing 
dentures before they might have a slur because their tongue's it's such a smooth surface the tongue will actually just slide right off of there representing having a perfect representation of their natural rugae like that they feel when the denture isn't in there to be able to recreate that in, onto the denture surface is a game changer in my uh, personal aspect. So here we're going to get into a little bit of the design aspects. So here we're in adjust morphology. Can't do too much in this aspect except change your tooth mold. So let's say if you pulled up right here, uh, you didn't think that the IPN 3D portrait, uh, it just wasn't right. And you'll be able to tell you'll actually have spaces. You'll have interproximal spaces. And you could you be able to tell that hey maybe I need to choose a longer uh, mold. So that's why, as you can see, the bite registration is so key. Pulling that up, you're able to see all of your everything that you need. That's why I said it's very crucial, so crucial to have this. So let's just go ahead into the positioning phase since we can't really go into the biogeneric and all of that. Um, that's more more or less for uh, the single printed arches and stuff like that. So as we go into here, I always, and you'll see another little screenshot right now that I'll put up. I always will hit control A because you want to control all the teeth like I was saying. You want to have them all move together since they're pre-occluded. And then I click linear. So you want to ensure that you have this function. Um, clicking linear is going to move them in a line. So I'll pull back up my bite registration, and I pre I moved it a little bit before this video, but let's say let's let's dim it to about 50%, so I can show you. Let's say we we need to move the midline a little. Remember, Control A is already selected. So we'll go over here. And we'll just move, we'll, we can shift it. We'll just shift it a little. So they're already pre-occluded now. So we're not moving individual teeth. And I, and that's very key. You don't want to start finicky messing around with one tooth. The next thing you know, um, everything will be all messed up and you won't. You'll have to basically go to admin and, and restart uh, the whole process over. So as you can see, we the dentist uh, uh, did the bite rim perfect. We got our midline marks, we got our smile line marks. We're ready to roll with this one. And uh, I can't state enough, it is very, very important to relay that to the dentist and take screenshots of this as well after you do your first case. Explain to them, hey, this is this is what I'm seeing on my end so that, that they can do it. And then they can also look at it and approve. Maybe they wanna change the tooth mold. Um, that, then at that stage, they're able to choose the tooth mold. So it's always great with these these features that we have in the digital aspect to to show them what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to smooth some of this out because I went ahead and made some really nice anatomy. But let me just go ahead and show you how quick and, and nice you can actually and pretty quickly do uh, any of the uh, gingival anatomy that you'd like. So I'm just smoothing it up. So you're just going to use your normal form tool like you're used to. You want to make sure your strength is at 100 or 75. If you have it a little lower, it might take take a little more time. But hey, we can come in here and uh, create nice little root eminences. So you might want to thicken that up a little. Just nothing too much. Go in here and just add a little bit. Add a little bit. very simple to to go ahead and i'll go from the side you can see we're starting to starting to create you know a little bit more root eminence so now here let me get into to the key aspects of that 3d printing what you see is what you get when it comes to these root eminence you put it in the design it's going to come out the printer like that so i recommend spending a lot more time in the edit denture base phase for 3D printing. Milling, unfortunately, due to the access of certain mills, it's not gonna be able to recreate everything. You wanna create, you wanna have give you a nice foundation, but overall, you're still gonna have to take your hand to it and um, go ahead and, and, and still use old school, old school technology 
but uh, just getting it started in this, um, you just want to make sure you have an equal thickness. Uh, that's basically what you want to have, equal thickness all the way around. So I'm going to go in and show you why I drew those lines a little bit, a little bit longer in the vestibule. So you can see, you can still see the lines. All that did was give me a, create a thicker uh, base inside. So you can see how thick this area is. It just creates a thicker. So you don't want to put it just necessarily in the deepest part of the vestibule. Extend that, and you can always shorten that. I know you don't want to spend the time shortening it with a burr. Um, but I, I would go ahead and create it. That's my personal opinion. Just create it a little bit farther, not just the deepest part of the vestibule. So there you go. Pretty, pretty easy. And like I said, you can stay here for a long time and, and sculpt these out and really, really, uh, do a lot of, a lot of fun stuff to, um, let me go go forward into the the finalized stage. <clears throat> so what we have here now, we we've gone through all the proper steps to get us design time. Depending on our, it should be about twenty minutes. Um, so that's that's create giving you some pretty pretty good time compared to you know having to use the old software and kind of. You know, finagle your way around and having to create pontics. This is going to actually create, you know, all of that for you. So it's going to create all of that. And the teeth fit amazing. I don't know a lot of cases that I did through another software company. The teeth sucked. Or the, the teeth looked so amazing. The fit was horrible. They're sloppy. They moved all around. Uh, the, the amount of time to put them in was tremendous. Um, it just was a pain. With these tooth indicators, see this? So it's a tooth indicator system. So it literally has locking points. In the locking points, it, it's just great. And plus it has a time saving uh, feature right now because guess what? These cards aren't stuck to wax. The other way, uh, using other software, they're still on a wax card set. So having to have to sit there and wipe off all the wax, this just truly makes it so much easier. And the other cool feature that we have now, so we went ahead, you can see the nice indicator slots for the, the upper. You could basically, you could train anyone to put these teeth in with HIPAA. It's just amazing. Or if you're printing them, that's, it's just great. Uh, the other feature I was going to show you real quick is if you wanted to do a quick try-in so or do a monolithic, you'll now be able to do that as well. You don't have to go back. You don't have to create anything else. Here is your monolithic. So you could also go ahead and give them a, a secondary backup denture um, to work with. Maybe put some composite on it, whatever you'd like. Offer that. Offer that as, a, as something else to go along with the package. You already have it right here. See, the teeth aren't split. So you have the IPN-inspired teeth in a monolithic form. You can print it out in an A2 or mill it, do a little cutback, and then throw some composite on it. And now you have another selling point. And uh, with that being said, uh, the great thing about digital dentures, or one of the great things about digital dentures, is the availability to produce this if the patient loses it. Patient loses this denture, you're able to go ahead and recreate this immediately. It's not like traditional, you're gonna start back. You can traditional, you can create duplicate dentures. They're not the same way. They don't have the strength. They don't have the, the look of these. And you'll never be able to just say, oh, you lost it. That's no worries. We keep the files. Um, we'll, we'll just go ahead and reprint or remill you another one. Thank you for watching this quick tutorial. We'll go in more details and in depth in the near future. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great day.